Yeah. And then I think clearly is, is definitely what has to be one of the more established names in comics today. Coming out to conventions and working on a slew of different things. Mm -hmm. Are there people you get excited about at conventions to meet, or is there stuff that's exciting you? I never get to writing? meet anybody. I can't even get it. I can't even... I, I don't get to do that anymore. <laughs> I wish I could. I mean, I really wish I could. I'm kind of hoping that it'll get dead enough around 2 or 3 this afternoon. I'll be able to walk around before everybody packs up and goes. Right. Um, you know, there's stuff I read that I like. I'm really liking what Matt Fraction does. I really like what Fraction does. Um, I really like what Eric Troutman does. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I'm working with him. Um, I like... In particular, Anthony Johnston's work. Right. Um, and I'm really excited about, I, I forget his first name. I want to say Joe Harris, and I don't think that's right. But Steve Ralston's new book, Throne, Ghost Project. Right. And I can't remember the guy's name, but the fellow he's writing it with, just what I saw of it yesterday, I hadn't known that Oni was doing this, and now I want to pick it up. So I'm, 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 I'm really kind of charged about that. Excellent. But it's been hard. Honestly, to go out there and say, well, who's doing what? What am I interested in? I haven't seen a lot of stuff. Okay. So I'm actually hoping that one of the goals for this year is sort of reacquaint myself with comics. Which has got to be an exciting prospect. I would like to be able to fall in love with comics again. Well, the, problem with, the problem with working in the industry is that you see how the sausage is made. Right. And after a while, you go, I'm, I've really had it with sausage. I mean, I don't read... I don't read PI fiction. Right. You know, if you ask me what I'm reading right now, I'm going to say the Patrick O'Brien, you know, Aubrey Matterin series, which, if you know the series, these are, you know, historical novels and they're naval adventures. And the language is as far removed from anything that I myself would write, you know, as you can imagine. And I love them. And I think I love them mostly because of that. I can read them and be like, this is a totally different part of my brain. I don't have to, I don't have to look at this and go, I don't judge it in any way. Right. And, and unfortunately, one of the things that happens when you're a writer is whether you want to be or not, you become more and more judgmental. I mean, sure. e even if you don't want to be, you read somebody's stuff and, you, and on some level you go, oh, I wouldn't do that, or they did that wrong, or ooh, I wish I'd thought of that. And it actually starts, for me, it starts to become a weight. It, it, it bears on you. And it steals any enjoyment. And I don't like, you know, there was a time when it would be, oh, comics! And you would sit there and read for hours lying on your floor. And now it's like, oh, yes, the comp box came. <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, eventually it gets sorted and 98% of it goes unread. And that kind of sucks. Okay. So. Well, I mean, talking about that, that time where you were really excited for ooh comics and reading on your mm -hmm. floor, like what were some of your first? Well, I mean, you, you said the Wayback Machine. I, I, for yeah. me, for me, I think the biggest sort of comic moment, there are two. The first was um, the Miller Mazur Kelly Daredevil run. Okay. And it was because I found it myself. I was running with a bunch of Marvel zombies at the time, and they were all like, X-Men, X-Men, X-Men! And I was like, what is this? Oh my god! Because it was so unlike anything I'd ever seen. Um, and Denny O'Neill and Dennis Cohen on the question. Absolutely. By the same token, I was like, this is, this is literature as opposed to comics as entertainment. And that is not to say that comics as literature cannot also be comics as entertainment. Sure. Because it absolutely can. But that was at a period where most people weren't doing that. Uh, and frankly, I have to say, we're in a zone right now where most people still aren't doing it. Okay. The, the, the willingness to... The commercial aspect of the industry, especially from the big two, is such that they don't want, they don't want art. They want product. Right. Um, and woe be to you if you say, let's elevate the discourse. Let's try to raise the game. Because it's an uphill goddamn climb. Um, but for me, you know, the things that engaged my passion were the things that were more than they appeared at first. Even you look at, like, Justice League International, you look at what the Giffen Di Matteo stuff was, more than what it at first appears. And that was incredibly engaging to me. So. Uh -huh. um, 
Yeah, yeah, and that definitely definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think going back to sort of the the big two and and the many people, many people. Yes. We'll we'll wrap up soon enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe they're enjoying watching this. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I have a microphone. They did not come to watch. I have a me. microphone, and you haven't told they me to will stop. So. That's right. <laughs> um, the, this interview is over. <laughs> ah, turning over the table. Uh, the the current run that you're doing on on the detective comics with yeah. that woman, and and in general, you tend to write a lot of strong, well developed female characters. Yes, I do. And that's done really, I think, impressively. Because also in the same way that like uh, unfortunately like a Down syndrome person can go really wrong. Mm -hmm. There's I think a lot of cop outs. A lot of writers take. Oh with yeah, females. no, I think I think a lot of I think a lot of male writers. Their interpretation of a strong female character is a guy with tits. Right. Um, they put male behavior on female yeah. characters, and that is inherently flawed. Um, but you know, any story, look, my, my approach to writing has always been character based. So you have to know who the character is. Gender is an element of character in the same way that religion, education, um, upbringing, and sexual orientation, I mean all of these things go to character. Um, so anything I write is driven from a character's experience. You put Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman in front of the same obstacle, you get three different responses to how they're going to solve the problem. Those are character based because Absolutely. each of them comes at it from a different perspective. You know, Batman has a much darker world view. Um, Diana has a much more pragmatic world view. Um, and certainly, you know, Clark has a much more idealistic, optimistic worldview. And I, that's not judgmental. That's just, you know, that's my analytical take. Right. People will argue with it and they're welcome to. I mean, that's my shorthand. But yeah, that's that. That's sort of how it rolls. So. Excellent, excellent. I'll let you get back to the, yeah, the throngs. Yeah, we've got a little backup here, so i got to sign something.